okay guys. Uh, the camera just overheated. All right, so I took it down the creek and um, killed it off. And now decided, the camera's decided to work again. But I'm gonna do um, a little show and tell craft. Uh, this is some of my crafts. Um, I'm gonna show you these pouches. These are pretty much all using kangaroo. All right, fantastic leather. Uh, absolutely brilliant stuff. All right, um, from an ethical point of view, um, this is just something we're never going to run out of uh, in this in Australia. All right, it's just um, you know crazily abundant. All right, and it's really good leather, really strong. One of the strongest leathers in this class. Uh, also, really good meat. All right, um, uh, quite often make kangaroo jerky and kangaroo stir fry and that kind of stuff. So. Um, I'll just break out these pouches, we'll set up a little thing in the shade here because it's pretty hot and bright and just show you some of the, my craft work, okay? Okay guys, so I'm going to show you um, some of my pouches, okay? Um, all these pouches are done using kangaroo, alright, so I'm going to show you three different uh, pouches, okay? Um, kangaroo as a material is just amazing, it's one of the best leathers out there, okay? Um, these are all using the fur, okay? But uh, you can also get the hide with the fur off, which is really nice, nice stuff. I really like using them. Um, but I'll talk about it and I'll show you them. I'll take you through. So this is the uh, Sami style coffee pouch. Okay. Uh, and I get asked a lot of questions about the Sami style coffee pouch. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, just really quickly, the Sami are a, a tribe of nomadic people from Northern Europe. Okay. Finland, uh, you know, North of Russia, Scandinavia. And um, this is a traditional pouch. There's a traditional design uh, in their culture, all right? And usually it'd be made in, with reindeer. And sometimes they use the fur, all right? And sometimes they used, you know, just plain re reindeer hide without the fur on. Uh, sometimes they had felt uh, around the seams and stuff like that. Quite ornate, some of them, and some of them were more plain, all right? But this basic design with the four panels like this is called a Sami style coffee pouch, all right? Um, it was made a little bit popular by Ray Mears, okay, because he used some in some of his videos. So it's become quite a popular design with the bushcraft community. The bush, bushcraft community has kind of adopted it, alright. Um, it's called a coffee pouch, but you can use it for whatever, right? Flower in there, bannock, right? Fire kit makes brilliant for fire kits, okay? So it's a traditional style pouch. But I mean, I've kind of turned it on its head a little bit because I'm using kangaroo, all right? Because I'm in Australia, obviously. I'm a little bit short on reindeer, all right? So that's my kind of Australian interpretation of uh, classical design, all right? And this is kangaroo tail, all right? This stuff here is calf. It's a kind of distressed calf. We have a few antler toggles there, all right? And this is the uh, tail of a kangaroo. Now, when you buy a kangaroo hide, or you go to have a look at one, it's a very unusual hide. I can always tell a kangaroo hide from any other straight away. Uh, this is a dingo hide, incidentally, all right? Um, a vintage dingo hide. It's not a recent one. Uh, and you can you can tell it's a dog, all right? With the kangaroo, you can always... Uh, it's like an arrowhead, the hide, all right? And you have this big tail that comes out from the, from, from the back, all right? So it's basically the shape of an arrowhead with this big tail. All right, it can be quite long. All right, it can be like half a meter long or something like that. Okay, so this is the tail, and there's quite a big difference and change in the fur and the leather and the tail, and it becomes uh, from quite a mousy, fluffy hide. When you get near the tail area, it sort of gets really short, like this. All right, okay, and that's this is my uh, interpretation of the coffee pouch. All right, uh, the Australian Sami coffee pouch, if that makes any kind of sense. All right, so I'll show you one other pouch. Oh, sorry, two other pouches. The one I really want to show you is this guy, all right? I'll get to that in a second. I'll show you my Barney Rubble pouch, all right? Um, that's what I call it. I call it the Barney Rubble pouch. Um, uh, because it kind of looks like something that <laughs> would be out of Flintstones. Um, certainly one of my more out of there designs, all right? But I say I really like it. Again, there's no rules with bushcraft leather, um, you know what I mean? Um, you know, some things are more out there. Uh, some things are more conservative, you know what I mean? Um, Certainly, I haven't seen anybody do anything like this. Um, so this is a little bit, this is a little bit more fluffy, all right. And that's from the main part of the hide. All right, it gets a little bit more fluffy like this, a little bit more mousy. All right, and you can see there's natural tonal differences there in the fur. This is a little bit more red, and then this is grey, and this is like almost white. This is an eastern grey kangaroo, by the way. Okay, so this is just I'd made this one before. 
this is a little bit more uh, you know straight laced but this is sort of uh, just calf and cowhide and then this is sort of the kangaroo version all right and this is just a piece of bone that I found in a bushwalk, alright. Sometimes I use ammo, sometimes I use bone, just depends what I can find. I'm always scrounging for materials. So I think it is a, a kangaroo arm bone. It looks about the right size and stuff like that. Could be wrong. Uh, I didn't have the whole skeleton to go by, but roughly looks about right for a kangaroo arm bone. But it's a kind of weathered bone, and it's just, you know, very simple pouch like that. You can put, you know, tobacco tin, all knots tin, flint and steel, you know, pocket knife in there. Uh, you know, carry it on your on your belt. This closure system like this actually works really well. Really easy to use. Take on and off. You know what I mean? Uh, our favorite sitting you there. Um, I'm quite proud of that. That's my Barney Rubble. I say I really like that. I might actually keep that to my, for myself actually. Uh, so there's the Barney Rubble. Uh, but the one I really wanted to show you and just talk about a little bit is this, which is the uh, what I call the kangaroo tail pocket pouch all right and this one's a flint and steel kit and that's how i really kind of envisaged this pouch being used but i guess you could use it in other ways as well you know uh you know for personal effects you know fishing kit sewing kit stuff like that um so this is you know um quite unique to me right so you know the coffee pouch is quite a traditional design goes back hundreds of years and you know the other one's a little bit more generic you know what i mean there's People who do this, not exactly the same, but people do similar type stuff. Uh, but this one's totally made up by me, pretty unique. Haven't really seen anybody do this, okay? Um, and I kind of started, I just bought some kangaroo tails and decided I want to really try and use this material and make something for bushcraft leather out of it, all right? And this is what I came up with. Um, when you buy a kangaroo hide, quite often you buy the tail separate uh, from the main body of the hide. Um, I'm not quite sure why they do that, uh, but that's how they do it. So you buy the tail, the tail separately, and they're actually quite expensive, they're about twenty to fifteen dollars. Okay, so I'll take you through. So the whole thing, the whole main body, is a kangaroo tail. All right, and this leather to the side, this is uh, kangaroo leather. All right, and then we've got an antler closure system here. Right, this is just a, a piece of feral Australian antler. All right. Um, and the closure system, so it, so just you just wind around the back, and you take it out like that. So it's quite an unusual closure system like that. Okay, you take it off, and then you open it up, and you see this has been made quite long. You could make that much shorter, but I've made it quite long like that. All right, and there's a reason for that. Now this is a flint and steel kit. All right, let's say I'm going to use it. Okay, so I'm just going to move. Um, I'm going to move the, the dingo, uh, just so you can see it better, a little bit more high contrast. Okay. So I'll take it out, so usually I do this on a log, so you do that, you take it out, now you've got your flint and steel kit in here, right? So you got all your usual, you know, uh, you got all your usual dust eggs, there's some chirp, alright, that's a bit of wick from a hurricane lamp, you've got your striker, I didn't make that by the way, uh, you've got a bit of hessian cord or jude twine, you, you got your tin, alright, and obviously inside your tin you've got some char material, alright? And the idea with this design, okay, is you do that as a little platform for you to work from, all right, when you're doing your flint and steel. So you can organize your char material, do you know what I mean? Uh, and organize all your gear. And it's, you know, it's a little workbench, essentially, do you know what I mean? It's a little sort of flint and steel workbench, do you know what I mean? Where you can keep all your bits and bobs, all your accoutrements, all right, all there. So you've got all your usual suspects. It's all there in front of you. You can see it. It's not, you know getting lost like that because you know anybody who does bushcraft and you start using things like this you know and it's very easy to lose do you know what I mean because naturally the, the natural color it's natural material so if you drop that you know it's gone do you know what I mean it's a long time to find it do you know what I mean so that was the idea it's a little kind of workbench workstation uh, for kind of um, flint and steel kit do you know what I mean so anyway um, I'll put some photographs up in the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is just, you know, a few of the things I make. Always changing, always experimenting. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I certainly try to be different and, you know, uh, with my craft work, you know what I mean? Uh, don't try and do the same thing as everybody else is my kind of um, model when it comes to bushcraft leather. Anyway, I'll stick a few nice photographs up in the end for you guys. Anyway, thanks for watching and catch you next time.